traders, uh, what I would like to talk about today is the relationship between the S&P and the Nasdaq and I'm going to summarize my trading session today right now. Uh, here's my close trades. You can see that I had a loser in win, although, well, the win is really just going sideways now, so I don't know what's coming next. Uh, a nice winner in Apple, in Beyond, a loser in EL. I don't know why I got into this stock. It uh, had too, I mean, the volume was too low, spread was too high, big mistake. Um, small winner in Facebook, an amazing winner in Boeing. And you need to remember that I started uh, with a losing trade in Boeing, but I trusted its trend. It took me out initially and then um, and then I needed to move out uh, first and then came in and added as it came down. Beautiful continuation there in Boeing. And as you can see here, I've got another $3,000 riding in Boeing right now, almost four. So I'm going to finish up like uh, I've got another around $4,000 here open. So I'm going to finish up like $14,000. Well, so far, I don't know what's coming next with Boeing. But right now I'm up $14,000. So that's a very good day for me. Now, I do want to discuss the relationship between the S&P and the NASDAQ because I believe that's very, very important. Uh, take a look at the S&P here below. The S&P is clearly trending lower. Just uh, to summarize what we've seen today, the market started down around um, 2%, I believe, something like that. It started down like 2%. NASDAQ also, also started down. Usually when the market starts down, you expect it to move higher in the direction of closing the gap. You don't really know how far it's going to be, but uh, this seems to me like um, enough. And then you expect it to come down. So it's usually is... It should be, it usually should be a gap and go, meaning big gap down usually sends it down to continue with the direction of the gap, meaning it started down 2%, it should come down and it did come down, but you do expect it to move higher. Then any sign of a pullback from the highs could be regarded as, as if the market uh, is losing direction. And certainly we did have this one beautiful five minute candle which took, took us under the lows, small pullback and continuation. Now, the thing about the market during these times is we're still into the corona crash. I mean, we're, we're still into this. So things are, uh, the market is very, very volatile and you can trust the market more. In times like this, you can trust the market more. In fact, anytime the market starts down with a gap down 2%, you can trust it more than usual because usually the market just doesn't start down 2%. I mean, normal times. But when the market starts down that much, it usually will continue coming down, especially in times like today. However, we are seeing something very strange here. Like the Nasdaq did the same, started with a gap down, but moved over the highs, crashed down. And since then, look, after 15 minutes, just after 15 minutes, the Nasdaq is in fact trending higher. S&P is trending lower. Now, usually, the S&P, I'm sorry, usually the, the Nasdaq, well, not usually, the Nasdaq could be, could be uh, your crystal ball to what will happen in the S&P. It starts with the S&P. The S&P is your crystal ball to what's going to happen with the stock that you're trading. Now, if you're trading uh, Boeing and you're following Boeing, uh, you should be following the S&P and not the Nasdaq. The Nasdaq is some kind of a pre-warning that something may happen to the S&P. And when the Nasdaq was moving higher, especially when it moved over the highs, that looked a bit, a bit, uh, a bit dangerous to me because I was still short. Win took me out at that time. Win moved higher, so I had a loser in win. But I kept watching the S&P because what counts really is the S&P, not the Nasdaq. Although the Nasdaq moved over the highs, it's very important. It's a danger sign. Look at what happened to the S&P. The S&P just did a higher low. So the S&P is clearly trending lower, clearly trending lower. The Nasdaq is probably going to come down after the S&P if the S&P moves to a new low. The S&P is what counts, not the Nasdaq. You should be watching the S&P. The reason for this is mainly the institutional traders. They're not watching the Nasdaq. Institutional traders who are 80% of the volume in the market are only watching the S&P in five minute candles. They're allowed to buy when the S&P is green. They're allowed to sell when the S&P is in the red. Right now, there's a red candle. They're selling. I don't need to watch uh, Boeing to know that Boeing moved to a new low now, but I will. Look at that. Now, take a look at Boeing. Just moved to a new low. Isn't that beautiful? 
The reason I knew that's about to happen because I was watching the Nasdaq here and I was seeing this very nice candle and look at what happened to Boeing here. So again, watch the S&P, make your decisions regarding the stock you're trading only according to the S&P, but use the Nasdaq as a pre-warning to something that may happen to the S&P. Well, did not happen, but it did take the S&P a bit up and now the S&P is trending lower. And again, in times like this, the trend is your best friend more than usual. Because usually the trend is your best friend, but in times like this, it could be trusted more. The stock trend could be trusted more than the S&P trend, but you start with the S&P because that's where the institutional traders are. So um, I'm doing better and better every minute now. It's already changed to my open positions are already changed to up $8,500. So I'm slowly approaching the $20,000 mark and I'm doing real good. It's about the same as yesterday. Thank you very much for being here with me today. Hope you did uh, good too. And um, I'll be seeing you all tomorrow. Thank you for watching our video. The material was taken from The Market Whisperer, my Amazon best-selling book. This essential guide to stock trading is ideal for those with no background or experience in stock trading. Click here to read the 200-page part 1 of this book absolutely free. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more stock trading videos. Questions or comments, please submit them below.